Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah dear viewers. Welcome back to our third and final segment of today's episode of Taste of Learning. We were talking about use of technology in learning and cyberbullying. Now we're going to ask our um, uh, guest teacher today in terms of um, ICT. If a student picks ICT for their GCC, could you please tell us about career path? how a student can build up their career and how a student can uh, prepare for uh, their GCC in ICT as you are an ICT teacher. Mm -hmm. Sure. Give some lights on them. Please. Okay, I, I think what's important is to first differentiate uh, ICT and computing. So there are two, uh, there are two very different um, topics in many, many ways. So ICT stands for Information Communication Technology. And this is mainly application based. You learn how to use different applications to create different uh, products and so forth. So it could be making a website, for example, a presentation, uh, you know, a poster. Computing is very different. You need a bit of a mathematical mind. You need to be good at logic, arithmetic and so forth. Computing is about how the computer works inside processor, memory, hardware, software, and it's all through programming. So if you're not someone who can sit there independently and work out programs and make programs and, uh, you know, the problems you come across when you're writing a program, you have to solve these problems. So that's the difference between ICT and computing. In terms of ICT, the, the kind of jobs that are out there or the things that you can graduate onto, typically people do business studies because a lot of ICT involved in that. Mm. Uh, some people may have a uh, love for accounting because they love Excel spreadsheets so much. Mm. Many people go into media studies. But these things sound like uh, relevant to com more computing than ICT. No, the one that I've said now ICT uh, th is ICT. Is relevant to Pure physics. application based. Okay. Yeah. I'll come into computing in a bit. Okay. So media studies is also something that typically students would choose along with ICT because they go hand in hand. You have to be aware of how technology is impacting the world. So if I may allow you to, if, if, I, if I can tell you the first unit of um, a typical ICT GCSE, living in the digital world. Okay. So what, you've, what we're talking about today, cyberbullying is covered in there. Mm. How smartphones are used, how tablets, iPads are used, for example, laptops and so forth. Um, the technology, uh, communication technology, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all of this is covered. So a student gets a real understanding as to how technology is used today not 20 years ago. Computing, you will learn about binary numbers. Any student who studies maths or who studies computing will know what I'm talking about. Mm. It's how computers communicate, noughts and ones. Not so so yeah. binary numbers, a lot of maths in there, and a lot of programming, as I, as I mentioned. You can say on and off, you isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> you need to know about how circuits okay. work. Mm. You need to know about the components in a computer. So most students know about, I don't know, megapixels, but they don't know what megapixel is. Mm. For example, it means one million dots, you know, in a picture. Mm. Processor, memory, ha hardware, hard drive. What are, what are the, how do these actually work and the different types that exist in the market? So you learn about all of these in computing. Typically, you could become a computer network engineer. You could become a programmer, a software engineer. So engineering is a strong field from computing. Okay, that's... We see the difference between ICT and computing. Yeah, 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 computing is more hands-on. Okay, we mm -hmm. will come uh, on this uh, point later on. Uh, so let's uh, move to um, Imad Zaman. Imad, could you please tell us uh, about um, uh, use of uh, technology, ICT, that you have uh, already covered something. Do you, have, uh, do, do you feel a kind of interest in uh, studying ICT? So people that let me take a call. Let's see who is on the line. Hello, assalamu alaikum wa Hello, Hello, Kola. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. What's your name, please? Where are you calling from? Hi, my name is Nuri. I'm uh, Imad's auntie, and I'm calling from America. Okay. Um, I just wanted, I just wanted to say that I'm very, very proud of Imad, and we're mm -hmm. watching him on um, the internet at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I had a question for him about the cyberbullying. Um, so could I speak to him? Yeah, you can speak to him, Imad. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Imad. Assalamualaikum, Wafi. Waalaikumsalam. How are you doing? Fine. 
Uh, good. It's really good to see you on the show. You, you're doing very well. Um, so I had a question for you. Um, I, but what I wanted to know is what do you think stops young people um, speaking to adults about cyberbullying? Um, and what do you think adults can do to make it easier for young people to approach adults? So, um, yeah, I'd love to hear your answer. Um, adults, like, are complex, so students feel a bit scared going to an adult because adults, they don't keep things as much as in confidence as a friend. So if you tell a friend, okay. your friend will keep it in confidence, but the teacher would be more likely to tell someone. Okay, okay, that's good. And I, um, I wanted to also ask about how you use technology for your studies, because you've done very well in some of your, um, some of your exams and things. So how do you use technology to help you? Um, I use the internet to research stuff too. So if I find a date, I find out the exact date rather than give a year and I sp um, make it more specific. Okay, all right. Well, thank you so much for the answers and well done. We're very proud of you. We're all watching from America and um, the baby answer is hello and um, hello to my brother as well. Okay. Um, and yeah, well done. Speak soon. All right. Bye. 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 Thank you very much, sister, for your call, for your beautiful call, and you've called us from far away from my Britain, actually, and the part of uh, the world. However, inshallah, stay tuned in. You know, do encourage your uh, contacts to call us and to join us uh, with their uh, uh, opinions, with their questions, like you. You have, uh, I'd say, really, really very good question. So I think this question can be uh, addressed to our um, teacher today. So you've heard this question, yeah? Mm. Could you please um, uh, expand uh, the, the reply on this sure. uh, question? I mean, this is uh, an issue that I, I've dealt with on many occasions uh, as a head of year, because a lot of the times there are issues in school, sometimes in lessons between two or more individuals. And when you investigate what the issues are, whether it was an argument or a fight, it seems that it all started off from either Facebook maybe, Snapchat, there's so many different types of online um, uh, social networking, is, is the words I'm looking for. And one person says something to the other person and they said the other, something else and before you know it, it's gone out of hand. So what Imad said is very interesting because he's, he's, bang, <laughs> he's bang on the money, he's right, because generally students do not feel comfortable in talking to parents. Why? Mm. Because they do not want the parents calling the school so the parent, they don't want parents calling me as a head of year mm -hmm. and say, Mr. Ali can deal with this problem. Because then I will have to deal with it and they'll be seen, and I'll give you the two names, they'll be seen as a grass or a snitch. So these are the two <laughs> words, yeah, which I'm sure Imad is familiar with because he's heard them. And it means someone who goes and tells on someone else. Mm. This is not very cool at snitch. all. Yeah, to be a snitch or to be a grass, <laughs> this is the biggest problem. Mm. Secondly, I think it's a confidence, uh, confiden confidentiality. Mm. How much of it can someone keep, you know, mm. a, se a secret? So I deal with this regularly and I can tell you it takes a lot of my valuable time. A lot of my valuable time, I have to bring parents in, I have to sometimes take statements from more than 10 students and then get to the bottom of it. And then my advice always is to the parents, and I'll say this to the viewers now, if your children uh, come across the same problem, I hope they don't, is you ban them from that social networking site for as long as you can. Yeah? I mean, there should be no questions about it. If they're doing their GCSEs, they shouldn't even be using social networking unless it's strictly monitored. Mm. Um, but the rest of it is a trust issue between the parent and the child. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if the child is going to abuse the trust, then uh, they have to be sanctioned, and they have to lose that. And parents, on the whole, to be honest with you, they respect my decision and they do and it's a big thing having their mobile phone taken away having social networking taken away from them at home is a big deal for the students confiscation a absolutely device, yeah. yeah thank you very much um, that's a brilliant uh, suggestion uh, would like to actually remind you of the things that's happening uh, around the UK in particular uh, the BBC on their online uh, research they have surveyed and they uh, have revealed the, a shocking news a shocking uh, figure which is 47 percent of the students are being bullied uh, at their school out of which 37 person are percent are the victims of cyber bullying 37 percent so this is really a shocking news so we would like to um, 
ask our parents, our viewers, to take uh, our teachers' uh, suggestions on board. You can confiscate your uh, child's um, devices uh, which they are using. You can snap uh, the connections if, uh, if you feel that th these are not um, are safe for them uh, to use because they find some th sometimes you know not to be interrupted. Uh, so. Uh, keep an eye uh, on them, on their, on their work, on their activity, and do not allow them. Do not allow them, a child under age, to use uh, the, 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 the things, the stuff, outside their living room. So keep an eye always on these things, and or do join us with your call, inshallah. So now <coughs> we will go to uh, the thing which is um, uh, important. Okay, another thing. Apart from all these things, what do you think as we are Muslims, okay, that as, as I can see you are a practicing Muslim, just you can uh, give some light on these things that as a Muslim and as a, as a young child, how they can uh, be practicing uh, more to be able to um, tackle all these problems, cyberbullying and this uh, nasty stuff sure. and indecent uh, images coming up. Sure, sure. I mean, alhamdulillah, we're, we're blessed to be Muslims. So Allah has chosen us uh, to be Muslims and we have to embrace the deen wherever we, we go. So the challenges we face today, they did not face at the time of the Prophet Muhammad <laughs> However, the, we know the deen is complete. And therefore, I'll give you a few examples. The first one is when it comes to indecent images, i.e. nudity uh, and so forth. Uh, the first glance you're forgiven for, it wasn't intentional and then you should move away from it or you should exit it as soon as you can. Then do your very best to ensure whatever got you there in the first place, you do not revisit. If you have friends who you know, perhaps they go onto these sites intentionally, mm -hmm. you should av advise them. You give them counsel. The Prophet Muhammad SAW says in a hadith, when a Muslim asks you for counsel, you should counsel them. It means give them the advice. Not go and tell their parents because you will lose their friendship mm -hmm. and going back to what I said earlier about snitching uh, and being a grass you counsel them say this is wrong mm -hmm. and that we are responsible uh, you know individuals as Muslims and we will have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so forth and then you've got many other problems that stem from this so counsel your friend if that's the case if it's yourself then ask yourself what am I doing here my parents bought me this computer trusting me to use it for the right reasons and I'm not mm -hmm. Th there are also other issues with the cyberbullying aspect of it. So you should speak to your friend as soon as you can. Sometimes you can't speak to your parents for whatever reason. Perhaps there's a relationship breakdown, nervousness, I don't know. Then speak to an older person within your family, brother or sister. Mm. Failing that, then go outside your immediate family and speak to one of your cousins. And say to them, this is what's happened. I actually said one or two things I shouldn't have said in anger and now they're threatening to beat me up, they're threatening to come outside my house, many things. And this is against the law as well. As soon as you make a threat via text, via email, it's the same as making a f threat in person. Mm -hmm. I think people should also understand this. Um, so again, you should confide in someone. Worst comes to worst, go and tell your teacher. Confide in your teacher and tell your teacher this is a situation, it's not happening in school, it's happening outside. Us teachers have a care of duty to our students. It's mm. not just about responsibility within the school, it's also their well-being outside of school. Mm. And then the teacher, as a responsible adult, will be able to sit down and go through the options that's available. Mm. So really, I suppose what I'm trying to say in summary is you have to consult with someone, you have to talk to someone. Yeah, yeah. This is important. The, 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 these suicide and these unfortunate cases happens because they felt they couldn't go to anyone. Mm. But you have to trust someone. So you have avenues uh, for uh, parents and uh, for children uh, to be able to um, practice Islam and uh, practice their um, uh, religion in uh, order to uh, get rid of this kind of uh, you know, uh, as young as young children, you know, the d different st different students are at different stages in their life in terms of their religion. Some mm. perhaps, as you said, more practicing than others. Mm. To me, practicing is someone who is trying their best to learn about Islam. You know, if you pray five times a day, to me, it's not practicing. That is part of your practice because compulsory. Mm -hmm. But it's someone who's trying to stay away from these images. Mm -hmm. That's practicing because they fear Allah. Something that happens, they see it's bad. They don't turn a eye, blind eye because the person it's happened to, they know. So what do they say? They say to that person, can I help you? Mm -hmm. This is practicing because mm -hmm. you're actually implementing the deen the way it's supposed to be implemented. So you should access 
you know, all of the people that you know, your friends and family, mm. and the Muslims, alhamdulillah, will always be there to help one another. Mm. Now, let me ask the same question to our child yesterday. Uh, could you please tell us how a student, how a child can um, learn from uh, Islam, from deen, from their religion, to um, uh, be able to tackle themselves from this kind of uh, indecent uh, images of nudity, as the teacher said? Um, how do you feel? Um, I think that the children should always remember that they're being watched by Allah. You might be able to protect it from they your should, parents. They are being watched by Allah, yeah? You might Very be able good. to hide it from someone, but mm. you won't be able to hide it from Allah on the Day of Judgment. Mm. Even here, when you're doing something, you're being watched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. At all times. Okay. That's fine. So, that's good that um, whenever you are doing something, you are a child, you are a Muslim, so you have to think that Allah is watching you. This is what Yusuf alayhi salam he did when he was being allured by uh, the, you know, uh, the, the queen of uh, Egypt. Then he, he himself, uh, you know, uh, uh, got rid of this, uh, this, uh, this kind of indecent uh, nudity of in images of bad things by way of remembering Allah. So now we would like to um, ask um, our parents today. Okay, it's a bit different as we have heard a lot of things uh, about uh, his uh, learning about all these uh, things about cyberbullying and about using technology. Tell us about how do you help? It's a bit different though because it's a generic question. How do you help Imad to improve his learning? Well, obviously, um, I mean, in terms of ICT, the internet is a great resource out, out there. As parents, we have limited knowledge, so if a child needs to learn, uh, research something about internet, uh, something, a uh, subject in subject, school, yeah. um, the internet's there to find out information before we'd, in our day, we'd go to the library, get a book, but then the information is instantly there. In regards to, say, Islam, on internet, there's a lot of Islamic resources mm -hmm. where the children can read the Quran easily on a tab rather than a book they can Thank memorize. you very much. You've connected uh, this to Islam the, on they internet. They can memorize surahs. Yeah. My children have learned a, a majority mm. of the surahs from listening onto a, on the smartphone. So the internet can be a very positive thing to in order to practice your deen. If you are unsure about a certain thing in Islam, you can easily go into the internet within a minute, two minutes. You will the information there from mm -hmm. proper uh, shaykhs. You know proper shares mm. for you to learn and Im yeah. implement that in your daily life. Mm. Thank you very much. That gives us um, an enlightening hint that whenever you are watching something, why don't you invest in sometimes uh, to watch a good talk on some shaykhs? Why don't you watch? You can, you can try on it. And this is a very good thing that because you'll be asked all these things. You'll be asked about your uh, time. Time is a, the, the best resource, resources given to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything will be asked on the Day of Judgment. So uh, we would like to ask our viewers, we would like to ask our parents, we would like to ask our children who are watching, please bear these, all these things in your mind and take all these things in board in order to achieve well, in order to improve well in your learning, inshallah. So <coughs> uh, the, another question uh, that comes uh, in terms of um, um, cyber uh, bullying and in terms of actually using technology that sometimes you know some parents okay this is uh, that should come first actually but uh, at the end still the time isn't up the time hasn't gone yet tell us about those parents who aren't uh, that much um, uh, in a position to use internet or the not that much uh, educated. Uh, the how do you how how those parents will address these issues? Could you please tell us? Um, it's actually a, a huge challenge for these parents, mm. um, and I don't think we've moved a long way mm. since uh, the beginning of all these problems to where we are now. Mm. Uh, to be honest with you, there's some movement which I'll mention in a minute, but um, just I can give mm. you a hint. Mm -hmm. You know, our um, uh, second episode. Uh, one of the parents told us that if we teach our children our mother tongue, mm. that will help uh, build a relationship between uh, parents and uh, children. 
and that's going to help uh, parents to understand because it's really difficult for a parent to straight away rather than a parent like you uh, who are brought up here mm. it's difficult actually to uh, pick the language yeah. so it's an easier way to, for a parent to teach their children Bengali or their mother tongue mm. then the ch parents uh, children relationship will be mm. uh, improved and that will help uh, resolve the situation how do you find it? How, what do you think? I, I think it's a valid point, D definitely. If and you, you have to if, link it to the if you can, uh, if you can to, do to this technology. Yeah, if you, technology. if you can do that, but um, uh, that won't necessarily answer the problem because your question was the challenges they face mm. because they are not aware mm. or equipped with the knowledge of what I don't know the world of ICT offers. Um, so you still have this issue where all they know is that they're going on the internet. They don't even know what the internet is. Yeah, so the the parents know that their child is browsing the web, they're doing their homework maybe, or they're watching a film maybe. But let's take I don't know YouTube for example. So YouTube, as we know, is a database uh, full of. So a database is a collection of something. It's a collection of videos. You've got Alhamdulillah, like you said, excellent talks from sheikhs. Mm -hmm. You can learn Islam. You can learn your Deen. You can uh, watch videos on courses mm -hmm. that people have attended. Mm -hmm. But on and the flip what, I, what I wanted to say actually, I mm. wanted to say that do not, you don't need to you know, invest in all your time mm. in just watching uh, the Sheikh's talks mm. or Islamic stuff, but you can watch a bit of time. You can just you know, spare some time for Islamic stuff rather than you know, uh, engaging in all these other, other stuff which are not straight away Islamic. What do you think, isn't it? Well, I think for me, I, I would say there's a balance here. Um, you can use, if you're talking about YouTube, where you typically go and watch videos, there's no harm in watching something that you're interested in. So mm -hmm. let me give you an example. My, my, my son, he's, you know, he's a big Arsenal fan, he likes football. So sometimes he'll go and see the greatest moments of Arsenal, you know, whatever. That's fine. There's no issues there. Yeah, definitely. But then other times I'll say you have to do a Quran, you go and, you know, the f favorite reciters he has, and he, he, he listens to them, and then they have the meanings at the bottom and so forth. As we uh, have actually come to nearly the mm. end of the mm. show, I would just ask one yep. last question. Yep. Isn't, it, uh, isn't it possible for a parent, mm -hmm. when the parent is in, in a position to uh, help a child out in, in terms of uh, providing support because the parent isn't that much educated, mm -hmm. to give the responsibility to someone else, to a teacher, or to hire a tutor or grown-ups, any other grown-ups in the family to look after this issue? What do you think? Uh, yes and no. The eldest <laughs> child or, yeah. or a, a cousin of the mm. parents? I, I think the first thing is... If, Quickly. If, okay, you cannot monitor someone 24-7. If you are saying that your child can only use the computer in the presence of people, that's different. But then you are not gaining the trust of that child, remember that. Okay? okay, because eventually the child will hit 14, 15, 16, and they are still required to sit in front of you in the living room and use a computer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, so not that the best way is actually to educate yourself. Educate yourself, build a relationship with your child, okay. and then even you can use uh, your mother tongue. Yeah, absolutely. To and there's one, Thank there's you one other thing before we go: history. You can history. check the history of where your child's been on okay. the internet. We're which websites? We're going to come to you, inshallah. The time is nearly over. Just in one second, tell us. Tell the viewers about wha how they can I improve their learning. One word. Um, internet. Use internet properly. Yes. Um, learn from your child. That's another thing. There are many things children can mm. teach you. If you don't know about something, ask your child. Maybe they can teach you. Thank you very much. Mm. Before they have to build up a relationship. Yes, go ahead. No, In I one word. Time is up. One word. Yeah. I think to the viewers. I, I, to the viewers. I, I think I think trust. Uh, if you it's pushing me for one word, trust. If you have the trust, then inshallah, then there's no issues with your child being on their own. In Thank the you very much. Mm. We're gonna close today. We have come to the end of the show. We would like to remind you of our um, uh, view actually where we are going to we are going to actually uh, provide our children some kind of uh, tastes in learning. Inshallah, we will see you on our next episode uh, on the coming um, Saturday, next week, inshallah. Until then, stay well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.